As the start of the 2024 season draws ever closer, the pressure on Red Bull and Formula One to start drawing a line under the festering scandal about Team Nonsapal, Christian Horner, and his predilection for sexually harassing his female staff, grows. Despite the best efforts of the British mainstream media to give Horner as much cover as possible by not referencing the sexual harassment element of the allegation, it is abundantly clear that Red Bull have tossed Christian into the arena, and it is only a matter of time before he is eaten by the lions, or trampled by the bulls. The silence from his closest allies in the media, like Martin Gopher Brundle, and David the Lion Toad Coulthard, is particularly damning, especially given that their colleagues have revealed on camera that, senior F1 figures were expecting Horner to have gone, even before testing began. A multi-billion dollar global company like Red Bull, will not openly engage an independent counsel just to investigate allegations made by one employee against the team principal and CEO of its world champion racing team. They will take such measures to distance themselves from or minimize their exposure to the wrongdoing, possibly on an industrial scale attributable to their CEO. Before going further, we invite those of you who haven't yet done so to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. This opening weekend is the first deadline for Red Bull and Christian Horner to agree terms for his departure. The longer Christian stays in place, the greater the pressure that will be placed on Red Bull, the racing team, and the sponsors. Every press conference, race weekend, off-track reporting, will revolve around the scandal. The fact that potential sponsors like Ford, and other team principals, are calling for greater transparency in the wake of the public announcement of the independent investigation, makes it obvious that Red Bull and F1 need a quicker resolution to the matter. The protracted length of the investigation, and the proposition by Horner's supporters, that, he has been set up by the Fischtarpens, raises the spectre that, this is a matter of conduct that had been openly condoned at the highest level. These allegations are symptomatic of a culture of toxic masculinity and misogyny in the F1 paddock, that is likely to have been led by the top echelon of Red Bull. Christian Horner is notorious for his sexist and misogynist comments, exemplified by his view that young girls were interested in F1 because of the drivers. It is therefore not unsurprising that a man of his ilk stands accused of sexually harassing a young female employee. Horner's best defense, which is probably that it was just banter, and part of the culture within the paddock and Red Bull in particular, cannot stand. Red Bull are probably offering him terms to leave with an NDA, preventing him from saying anything about the culture that pervaded their corridors and informed his sense of being set up. After all, if it was common knowledge within certain circles that he was trying to coerce the young female into a sexual relationship, then someone in that circle could have advised her to make the report to Austria. Of course, the other side of that is that a similar arrangement has to be struck with the young lady that became the unfortunate focus of Christian's lechery, and any other young ladies that may emerge, or, have since emerged. So, Horner's departure, is set to cost Red Bull a tidy packet, subject to the number of victims. And should he decide to go down fighting, then he could take a few casualties with him. Apart from losing his career, Horny Horner, is likely to lose his marriage as well. His Red Bull exit will undermine his already frazzled wife's position that her spouse did nothing wrong. After all, the man who led Red Bull from inception to four unsullied world titles and added three more tainted ones will not be sacked at the top of his checkered career for doing nothing wrong. Furthermore, the woman who made her fortune as one member of the man-made quintet of feminist champions will struggle to cope with the backlash from her husband being exposed for leching over at least one young female employee. As fate would have it, the UK public now have an idea of the possible cost of sexual misconduct at work, and how NDAs are used to protect the employer and the accused. It was recently revealed that Philip Schofield, the top-ranked daytime TV presenter, who is married to a woman, but had engaged in an unwise but not illegal sexual relationship with a young male employee, who he had known from when the young man was underage, had paid his teenage lover a six-figure sum after getting him to sign an NDA. Philip had initially denied rumors of the affair, but as the public pressure grew, he was forced to admit to it and also to lying to his employers about it. 
ITV subsequently engaged the services of an independent counsel to investigate whether they could reasonably have been expected to have been aware of the open secret. However, thanks to the NDA, which Philip repeatedly denied knowledge of, at that time, the independent counsel, who was therefore unable to speak to Philip and his teenage lover, 34 years his junior, could only reach a conclusion that exonerated his client. However, notwithstanding the exoneration, Philip resigned, as did his co-host some months later, and the program has hemorrhaged viewers and sponsors since then, and is now struggling to survive. Well, what are the chances that Red Bull's independent counsel will exonerate his client, but not his target? Christian Horner, as the focus of the investigation, will either have to fall on his sword like Philip did, or face the ignominy of a sacking. It has been reported that Christian offered his accuser £650,000, which she refused. Unlike Mrs. Schofield, whose husband was the sole provider and celebrity, Mrs. Horner, has a higher profile and a deeper pocket than her husband, so Ginger Spice will have to deal with the public backlash directed at her, especially in her capacity as a feminist icon. She will have to handle this backlash, while processing information such as the reported settlement, along with other details, that will continue to emerge, gradually peeling away her husband's hastily assembled layers of denial. At some point, she will be faced with the unimpeachable conclusion that, over a prolonged period of time, her husband had tried it on, unsuccessfully, with a young female employee. Of course, once he is unemployed, the couple will have more time to spend together, processing the steady stream of information, coming at them, revealing more details than the husband had initially provided to the wife. Well, how will Mrs. Horner make Mr. Horner pay for this? Kindly provide your suggestions in the comments section.